Armadale Capital is focused on investing in and developing a portfolio of investments targeting natural resources in Africa and related sectors. Andrew Tunks is the non-executive director. Now, Andrew, you've only been with the company for four months. So what is it about Armadale that's attracted you to its rank and file? Sure. Um, well, it's a gold project and I'm a gold specialist. It's, um, and there's a lot of gold projects out there at the moment. And, and really what I do for a living is look at them and try and discover what's good and what's not. So the thing I like about Armadale Capital is that it's a low capital cost, low operating cost gold deposit in Africa, which I've spent 15 years developing and exploring for gold in Africa. So I'm very familiar with it. And the board have asked me in to give them advice on taking the project from exploration through development towards being a mine. So it's a very exciting time. So from exploration, development to production? Absolutely. How long do you think that's going to take? I believe that um, we can be in production during 2016, um, probably just after the half year mark, if everything goes well. Okay, that is a huge call. So you're going to have to take me right back to the basics. Is the infrastructure in place? Have the tests been done? A absolutely. So um, it's an exploration play. It's been, it's been explored by several big companies over the years um, and Armadale got into it about three years ago. So there's been a lot of work done there. There's been a lot of work done on the metallurgy. There's been a lot of work done on the resource. So the resource is defined at about 680,000 ounces. The metallurgy recoveries have been defined at around 85 to 90%. We've, we've published all those results in a scoping study. And what we're doing at the moment is finishing off the DFS, so the Definitive Feasibility Study, which looks at our costs, how we're going to mine it, how we're going to treat it, and how we're going to build it. And, and that's really where I come in. So I, I've um, been involved in the final stages of the DFS. We're doing that with a group out of Johannesburg called Barra Consulting. And um, when we finalise the DFS, so we've got with the plants designed now, we're doing probably the very final phases of our metallurgical test work. That's called variability test work. We know what the recoveries are, but you need, this ore body's quite long, over a kilometre, and you need to sample different parts of it to make sure that the recoveries are consistent or where they're inconsistent, so that you understand how your gold production will vary over the life of mine. Okay. So those are the final tests that we're doing. We'd like to do a bit more drilling. We believe that the resource has a lot of scope to grow and, um, and, and that's something that we'll be looking to do over the coming months. But really at the moment we're focusing on the final phases of the DFS. We expect that to be complete right in the new year and as, as soon as that's complete we hope to tie up our final funding agreement and, and then push the button on the ordering of the plan. Okay, now we're talking about there, but we actually haven't said where yet. <laughs> where Absolutely. is it? It's a kilometre, but where is it? Okay, so it's in the, it's in the southwest uh, part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So just the Congo for short. Um, it's an extremely remote area. Uh, in the 1950s and 60s, there was a large manganese mine out there at a place called Kasengi. And so there's infrastructure, there's rail, and there's roads out to the Kasengi mine. We're about 80 kilometres from there, so it's dirt tracks down to the to, to our proposed gold mine. It's extremely remote. It's very poor. There's no social unrest or upheaval. The locals are really very much encouraging us to come because they need employment. It, it's completely subsistence where we are, so there's no power, there's no water. It's just local farmers, and and they would like the opportunity to work and 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 raise their standard of living, and we're very hopeful to to provide that for them. Okay, so you're painting a very optimistic picture, but you've told me that the big companies have had a look at this area previously. Why didn't they want it? Well, and, and I was the chief geologist at one of those major companies, not one of the ones that looked at this project, but the big companies have very high hurdles for investment. So they might say, we want to find a gold deposit, but it has to be five million ounces, and it has to produce for 10 years, and it has to ha produce at 100,000 ounces a year. So this is a small operation. It's only going to produce 25,000 ounces a year at startup. Um, but we would hope to grow that as we grow the resource. So um, it's certainly not the sort of project that a big company would develop. It's simply too small. But that's OK, because for the small companies, it's all about profit margin. And we feel that this is a low capital cost project. 
around $20 million to build and start the mine. And then a low OPEX project, that, that means the operating cost. So we, we think that our cash cost will be around $650 an ounce. And that's a, that's a healthy margin for a little company. And that's really where we're focused. Low, ca low OPEX, low CAPEX. Okay, but you do have ambition though, because the way you're talking, it's, it's long term. I mean, how long do you intend to be there? Well, at the moment, the project in the scoping study was defined for a nine year mine life. But we feel that the scope to more than double the current resource. And uh, so we would look to be doing exploration over the next few years and look at doubling that. One of the keys to this deposit is that the ground is very deeply weathered or oxidised. And, and that allows us to mine it very, very cheaply. So, that, so it is a low grade deposit around 1.5 grams uh, per tonne of 1.5 grams of gold per tonne of rock, but um, the, the operating costs are low, and that's because there's no what we call drill and blast. Mm. We just simply dig it up with a digger and put it through the plant. There's very little crushing, it's extremely soft. In fact, I can crush a lot of it in my hand, and we Australians are strong, but we're not that strong. Okay, well, let's do some timelines, let's do a bit of maths together. So, you're hoping to be into production by next year, 2016? Absolutely. Okay. I'm not sure exactly when because we, I, I don't want to talk about that until the definitive feasibility study is complete. That should be complete in January. Okay, so that's when I'll hopefully be speaking to you next in just over a month's time. So 2016, so you're initially talking about life of mine of nine years, but you're hoping to double it. So do, do you have enough money to get it to production and maybe continue along that line? When, when do you hope you'd we be cash generative, for example? We certainly have enough money to finish the definitive feasibility study. Uh, no, we, we do not have enough money to build the mine, but we've entered into a heads of agreement with a, a mining contractor in, uh, in the Congo. Because of um, some issues going on with the copper market in the Congo and some of the big companies pulling out, there's a lot of stranded mining equipment in the Congo at the moment. And it's extremely difficult once you've got gear in the Congo to get it out. So there's, there's a whole bunch of mining equipment that's not being used and it's sitting parked up. One of, there's a couple of those companies that we're talking to and um, effectively what they've offered for us is to finance the project, which we expect to be around $20 million, on the basis that we use those guys for the mining contract. So, so that's a negotiation that's going on at the moment. We, we have a heads of agreement with one party called AMCS. Um, and, but really to, to finalise that agreement we need the definitive feasibility study, we need to know the costs, we need to know how much equipment to use, what sort of trucks, what sort of diggers, how many people. We won't know that till the end of the feasibility study and then we'll, con we'll consummate those negotiations and have funding. Um, there's a huge problem in the market at the moment with unfunded projects. There's a lot of good projects out there but they, they, they're big capex, you know, they might require 50, 80, 100 million dollars very difficult to get those projects up and running, but at $20 million and a good partner, we, we believe that we can do it. Uh, you've anticipated my final question, which is 2016, is it going to be defined by partnerships? Oh, I think so. I, I, think, um, I think that the small end has to move away from the classic equity investment. We have to look at an institutional investment done through you know, raising money on the stock market. I think we have to look to, to private equity, we have to look to partnerships with other people in the industry because everyone's suffering in the gold industry at the in the mining industry at the moment. So, so doing deals with our contractors uh, potentially is, is a source of funding for us and a source of funding for them. Andrew Tunks, non-executive director of Armadale Capital. Thank you very much indeed for joining. Pleasure us. to talk to you, Sarah. Thank you very much. <laughs>